In today's episode, we unpack the perfect church visitor follow-up process and what your church needs to do to implement it. We hope this podcast helps your church reach more people and grow. This is the Reach Right Podcast. Well, hey guys, welcome to the Reach Right Podcast, episode number 47. I am your host, Thomas Costello, and with me as always is my co-host... Ian Hyatt. What's up, Thomas? Hey, Ian. Looking forward to our conversation here today. We're going to be talking about uh, how to build the perfect church visitor follow-up process. Uh, I think this is going to be a good um, a good conversation. Bold title, I know, that we're going to tell people perfect. how to build the perfect one. Yeah, uh, yeah. But man, um, we've done a few episodes already about assimilation processes yeah. and visitor follow-up. And so we've had these conversations um, that have given lots of tips on how to improve it. Yeah. But I still feel like what people, um, what we hear a lot uh, is in these conversations, people will tell us that their visitor follow-up process, their assimilation process is a work yeah. in progress or yeah. it's not quite there yet. And so I thought it would be helpful today just to give um, our idea of what the perfect process would look like. One that yeah. um, as a, someone that's pastored a church before, um, and I've seen this process work and play out really well in our church, yeah. in churches that we talk to. Now, all I have to say, we know it's bold. I'm sure there yeah. are other processes that are not yeah. necessarily imperfect if they don't follow this. <laughs> uh, but I think that for those of you that maybe have a, um, a thrown together or not fully built, built out visitor follow-up process, yeah. we hope this serves as kind of a template for you that would really yeah. work for your church. Yeah, that's good. And I think, you know, churches have struggled with this for a while, you know, assimilation and follow up and all of that. And, and uh, for a lot of different reasons. But uh, one encouragement I've seen over the last year with the pandemic and all the pandemic kind of forced churches to get a little bit better at this, uh, especially with everyone going digital and and uh, and capturing people's information online. So we're going to dig into that a little bit and um, just good strategy that's kind of come out of that whole thing too. But uh, right. yeah, I think this would be very helpful. And why don't I, I kick us off here for the, uh, the first one. First step yeah. is pretty simple. You've got to first gather their information, right? So yep, um, it, you can't do anything if you don't have someone's contact uh, information. And I know we're in this age where people are being spammed more than ever. Um, people are uh, using trash email addresses that they give to vendors and all of that stuff because they just we're being being hit with all this and people right. you know are worried about uh, their information out there on the internet in general or on social media and all of that so we, we get that it's kind of it's a sense it can be a sensitive thing to people but uh, but let's face it if someone's already interested in coming to your church or they come to your church well we can assume that it's okay to to ask them for this so um, so, I guess that brings kind of the first question that I know we've heard when we've made this recommendation or if we talk to churches and that's usually kind of like, well, what kind of information should we gather? I know I hear that that question yeah. when I consult with churches is, OK, what's acceptable and all of that? So your thoughts and ideas on that? I mean, the first thing we think of is, of course, name, uh, email, yeah. emails, kind of an easy ask uh, yeah. phone number. Maybe what do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think to. Uh, to kind of back what you were saying before, and before I answer the what should we gather question, I think that this is something that I find a lot of pastors are scared of, like yeah. asking people. And I guess I get it is that you feel like some people will tell you no and nobody likes yeah. hearing no. And so I, I understand that. But it's just something that you have to get over that in order mm -hmm. to disciple people, you need to know how to get a hold of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's just the, and if yeah. your mission is to, to win people to Jesus and disciple them to become more like Jesus, you're going to need their contact information to do those kinds of things. So yeah. asking for that uh, is something really important. So what should you ask for? Uh, there has been a lot of research on this, not just in the church world, but in the business world, uh, yeah. I know, because we ask people for their information and we have uh, on average about 25 to 30 people giving us their information every single day here at ReachRight. Yeah. Um, and there is proof that the less information you ask for, the more information you will get. Uh, so yep. the more number of people that will give it. So yeah. if you ask people for uh, in, their, in that contact card or wherever you're having it on your website, wherever it is, uh, at a minimum, you'll need to ask for their name. You'll need to ask yeah. for their email address. I would recommend their phone number 
and I yeah. would in most cases uh, ask for their address. But yeah. generally, only ask for the information that you actually plan to use. Uh, hmm. So if you're going to um, ask for their email, you need to be yeah. willing to email them. If you're going to ask right. for their phone number, you're going to be texting them at a minimum. Uh, if yeah. you're going to ask for their address, you're going to be sending them something like a card in the mail or something like that. Yeah. So what you shouldn't ask for in this first form uh, is how did you hear about us? What did you right. like best about your visit with us? Yeah. Um, you shouldn't be asking for names and uh, information on all their their family members or kids. Right. You shouldn't ask right. for their birthdays. It's too uh, much too of, soon. <laughs> right. So yeah. all that can come later, but getting those probably four pieces, name, yeah. address, phone number, mailing address, I'm yeah. sorry, uh, an email address. Uh, those are yeah. the, the things that you need to ask for there. So yeah, yeah. So, I've seen the phone number be optional too. That's kind of an idea. Sometimes people just make that an optional thing. Sure. But uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I think really everything on these, if it's a physical card, everything is innately optional, right? Like yeah. they don't have to write their name. There's no, you can put it in the offering basket, whether you have your address on there or not. Uh, with these digital ones, yeah, I would encourage you to make everything optional except yeah. for the name. You need to know right. who you're talking to. Uh, but even email address, because people will sometimes kind of alter their communication preferences based on what is optional, what is required. But I really wouldn't ask for more than those four things on the yeah. first one. But that brings the next question is when when should we gather this information? Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? All the time, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. All the time. So, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, that's just a given nowadays. Everyone's doing things on their own time and there's so many different right. outlets Uh and places where it can be gathered. And uh, so I think that uh, you should always be doing it because I mean, that's really, that doesn't mean, because you, you don't always have to follow up, right? At a certain time. Right. So, but to always be gathering it is a good thing because it's coming yeah. your way and then you can organize a good follow up time. Yeah, I think that the, the main shift here, it's a paradigm shift because I think yeah. two or three years ago, Almost every church did their, they gathered information on Sunday mornings on physical cards that yeah. people would drop into the offering. And yeah. I think in, in my view that that seems like you'll get, you will get fewer responses if you just use that method. And I think now uh, doing it digitally online and giving yeah. people opportunities to do that before their visit I think yeah. that is proven to be something that really is the the best time to gather someone's information because yeah. it kind of confirms their visit. If, if someone gets on there and they plan their visit and you do like a let, a, let us know you're coming form right. on your website right. or a pre-register your kids form on yeah. your website so they'd give you their information before they show up. Right. Um, the truth is, is that they're going to they're going to be more likely to make that first visit. They're yeah. going to be uh, more. What we've found is that they're stickier. Uh, is that yeah. people that do that, they're more likely to come back again. And so yeah. I think the the idea behind this question of when should we gather it, I think pulling that forward as much as possible to before the first visit, that right. really only benefits you. Um, so yep. that's always a good thing to do. It lets you contact them ahead of time and do those kinds yeah. of things. So, yeah. Well, if you're doing things well online now, there's uh, you you covered a few of them, like plan your visit pre-register. Another good one is an online connection card. Uh, this right. is something we see more of just for one more idea. Um, you know, after someone watches a message online, they can fill out a card just, you know, maybe letting you know even what they're interested in. They may have right. uh, they may have a prayer need. They may have a they may want to know about how to get baptized at your church yep. or something like that. So uh, we just have the opportunity now if you have a good web presence to ask people in a lot of different ways. Right. Um, so I remember on, in the old days on old church websites, really the only thing was like a contact us page and a prayer request right. form. Uh, but now we have so many other ways that people can initiate that and give you their info. So that's good. Yeah. It's as if we're talking about call to action in every single conversation we ever have, Ian, as this is yeah. the, the chief and mistake I'm sure that we're we gonna, see. <laughs> in with that too. Yeah. I, I'm sure that <laughs> we, we will. Yeah. Said. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure that we will. So um, he, here's the last question. I think we get about gathering information, kind of the first step in the, the perfect visitor follow-up process is how do we get people to do that? Because yeah. what I think a lot of, one of the hiccups that pastors run into is that they'll have these connection cards. They'll have an online connect card or a pre-register mm -hmm. card and you know, that they they get a small percentage of people actually filling it out. 
Uh, and this is something that we measured uh, at the last church I was pastoring. We, we looked really closely at these numbers and we saw about 80% of our in-person visitors would fill out a card. Uh, and um, we saw that, well, most visitors didn't pre-register before they showed up. Again, yeah. we, we found those to be very sticky, but I think there's some things you can do to improve the number of people that give you their information, therefore kind of move into your assimilation process. Uh, yeah. The main thing you have to do, though, is you have to give them a reason. You have to incentivize it um, mm -hmm. because people are much more guarded with their information than they ever were before. Um, right. You know, uh, 30 years ago or 20 years ago when uh, when we were younger, Ian, um, we would you would ask someone for their, their information and the odds of them giving you their number. Like that was like the nervous thing that guys would have to ask girls for when we were kids, right? Is <laughs> did you get her number, right? That's and right. Like, yeah. Will yeah. you call her is the assumption yeah. with that. Now or, it's- I, Or beeper number, pager. Right, yeah, absolutely. If you were really- Invading uh, ourselves big I'm time. I'm not now. that old. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that nowadays people are much more guarded with any of that information. Um, yeah. So- if you don't give them a reason to give it to you, your odds of getting that information are very slim. Now it's, you know, some person might want just to to talk more or has a deep need that they need to talk to a pastor about. Right. That's great. Uh, you can reach out to those people, but um, I think you need to give something away. So yeah. for those pre-registration or those let us know you're coming forms, it's usually uh, you'll promise some kind of a gift when they arrive. You'll tell them that we'll help you get your kids checked in and that we'll get you yeah. a seat in the middle so you don't stick out and kind of get you, give them some kind of a promise. For people on Sunday mornings that are filling out a card um, or maybe they're doing it online, you need to give yeah. them a reason too. You, you probably have yeah. some kind of swag or uh, yeah. I know at our church, we gave $5 coffee gift cards. This yeah. is a small price to pay for someone that could be yeah. a part of your church long-term and you can make a help them make a decision to follow Jesus. I think it's it's worth it every single time if it helps us move people down that assimilation road. So anything to add yeah. to that? Not much. No, I think you covered it. Uh, my church does, and it's starting to get hot here in the summer. Uh, my church does uh, water bottles, so get creative, you know. Yeah. Um, so, and, and what uh, you can kind of, uh, what people like, you know, something yep. that they'll actually, they'll actually take advantage of and it doesn't have to be expensive. One other thing I'd say too, so a little little tidbit is I think being specific about what they get is better than being uh, being kind of uh, uh, hiding it a little bit. So I hear some yeah. churches when I listen to an online message, they'll say, you know, we have a we have a special gift for you or something yeah. like that is what they'll oh. say. You know what? Get up there and hold up that water bottle and say, we have yeah. this really nice water yeah. bottle. Uh, we want to give it to you and to everybody in yeah. your family. We want to give you guys one. Or yeah. we have a $5 gift card yeah. right here. Use a, a um, some kind of a, a visual aid to help you with that and not yeah. just kind of the special gift mode there so because they could be thinking anything they could and, and when we're talking about uh spirituality they could be thinking oh they're gonna give me a, my get out of hell free pass uh, yeah, or well, something like that so you, you don't know what they're thinking so you you want to be i agree a Make small sure copy of the gospel of john or something there like that go. is what they probably expect that but knows? yeah so yeah be be concrete with yeah. it it'll help you and you'll get more contact information which brings us to number two what do we yeah. do with that contact information you need to contact people. You need to actually do this. Um, I want to say a couple of things about this before we get into some of the questions we hear most about it. This is probably the biggest, uh, f the biggest place where people fall off in their assimilation process is they don't contact people enough or they don't contact people at all once they have their yeah. information. Right. Uh, I know this having led... Uh, and been in leadership at multiple churches, having been the guy that makes the calls or makes the emails and been the guy that uh, has other people on our team do that, um, that this is something that needs to be outlined clearly. It needs to be something that you have a very clear process of how you contact all 